Hi, I'm live. How are you guys doing? My name is David Fickus. Welcome to the premiere of Marisa Coughlin's short film, Fulfillment. Just to let you know, uh, we are live on the Drama 3-4 YouTube page. We are doing a campaign uh, called 34 Days of Drama 3-4, and we've been doing a retrospective of a lot of our work, but tonight is very special because we are showing something that you have never seen before, something that we worked on a little bit ago, um, and we were just about to go into some film festival world and submit and have this whole life. Uh, and then, um, I don't know if you noticed, but the world changed a little bit. So we decided to not let this sit on a shelf until we all figure out how film festivals work. So we want to invite people to um, find a, a new way to entertain. And uh, I should say, we are working out a lot of technical kinks. So if anything happens, uh, please just go back to the Drama 3-4 YouTube page or go through the, um, the, the, the link that brought you here. Um, and we'll find a way to get it back up and running if, uh, if something uh, hiccups. Um, but uh, uh, we have some guests. Uh, we have the writer and director and star and then the co-star of the film. And I'm going to bring them in and we're going to chat for a little bit. We're going to intro the film. We're going to watch the film, and then you guys can put some questions in the uh, in the chat. And then afterwards, we'll do a little Q and A. We'll hang out and we'll sip some wine and enjoy our quarantine. So, without further ado, please welcome Marisa Coughlin and Kevin Heffernan. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Are we on? <laughs> we are on. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you? Great. 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 Thanks for having us. No, thank. Thank you. I mean, come on. You're basic. This is this is more teamwork. It's more teamwork. It is. Um, so we're going to watch your movie, and you're always nervous about stuff like this, Marisa. What? I don't ever get nervous. <laughs> do you want to? Uh, do you want to? No, never. No. Um, for those that don't know, uh, Marisa and I have known each other a long time. We went to theater school together, and uh, I'll tell I'll tell the Super Trooper story later, which I was cracking up, Kevin. And I was reminding Marisa of when she first told me about Super Troopers, and it was very, very funny. And it's amazing <laughs> that here we are now, chatting this way and uh, and ready to watch a movie that we all worked on. Um, Marisa, tell us about your uh, how how this came to be. Well, I don't, I mean I don't know if I should. Well, okay. So I've been an actress, and then I was a writer, and I've always had the yearning to uh, direct and had this idea. I won't talk too much about it until they see it, I guess, because I don't know. But um, Ficus and I go way, way back. Ficus is famous for getting me to do things that I'm, <laughs> I don't know, dragging my feet about. So he was like, we're doing it. We're doing it. And so uh, last August, I guess, you sort of just... Well, we've been talking... Time. We had yeah. been talking for, I don't know, five, ten years. Yeah, 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 something like that. I'm but, really yeah. to pull triggers, let me tell you. Yes. Um, but he's done that since we were in college. He wrote me into plays and all sorts of skits and this and that, and he's good that way. So he... I'm uh, sorry, Andrew, welcome. He got, he <laughs> got me up the starting blocks, which I'm grateful for, and um, yeah, Kevin and said then, yes, so yes. then we were a go. Yes, and Kevin joined us in this world, which was very amazing and wonderful. Thank you, Kevin, for, for agreeing not only to do this, but also to, uh, to you know, to be in the movie and also to join us like this and, and have a viewing party and all that stuff. How, how are you doing? Good. I'm doing well. It's my pleasure. My pleasure to do it. I mean, you can tell your Super Trooper story later, but I, I'll say when we did Super Troopers, uh, Marisa had the biggest resume of anybody. So she did us a favor coming to our movie. <laughs> I had to reciprocate. Little did we know that this was going to be the thing <laughs> that definitely mattered most in my career. Yeah, it was lucky for me, that's for sure. But it was such a funny script, even though I didn't know you guys. It spoke for itself, as we all know now. Yeah, the story, I'll, I'll jump into that real quick because it's a quick story. But the story that uh, I remember is Marisa and I were on a hike and she said, I th I'm thinking of doing this movie and she started explaining the meow scene to me on a hike. <laughs> and she kept laughing through it so much. She was like, and then they say meow a lot. And I was like, I, I kind of get that. But she was just giggling so much. She was like, I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. But they do, th they do this, but I'm, do I'm doing it wrong. And, and it was just really funny. And I remember just going like, that sounds great. Go, go, go have fun with those guys. And then, you know, 
years later, it was, uh, it was, you know, you guys are kicking butt. I actually was laughing. I, as I've been cleaning out, I know everybody's been cleaning stuff out, but I, I did, I did find my super trooper is a two premier thing. All right. yeah. Not to be outdone, though, Marisa, by the teaching Mrs. Tingle, <laughs> time, which is pretty good. Jay actually sure. told me that's, that was that movie that got me Super Troopers, I think, because I did this exorcist thing in that movie that was so crazy that he's like, well, if she can do that insanity, she can probably wipe off. Was, but that uh, was your big resume. I mean, you were, you know, you had done big movies and big TV at that point. You did the uh, Wasteland show, right? The Wasteland. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. were, you know. Yeah, we were nobodies. You had the big resume. Yeah, it was huge. It was huge. <laughs> and you, you guys are all you guys are all San Francisco, right? You guys were all up up north. Kevin, was that where you guys were doing no, all uh, your Brooklyn Lizard stuff? Or we were doing it in New York. And, oh, uh, New York. Yeah, and then we we kind of and then guys started migrating out to L.A. But uh, I think when we shot the original Super Troopers, we were certainly half of us were still in New York at that point in time because we shot it just north of New York City. In Fishkill. Yeah, Fishkill Beacon. Uh, Does the still sound exotic? I was it like, sounds great. That sounds like a sexy yeah. town to go stay in. It was uh, the <laughs> correctional facility, some prison in Fishbowl. Oh my god! The I love that movie making. <laughs> hey, Bryce, just on the technical side, uh, uh, are we are we all good to go? Are we piping out of there? Because you know, my mom texted me and said we're missing <laughs> it, but I'm not sure I totally trust that source. Um, are we Let good? Let me check and see what my mom's saying. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Where's Share Bear? Is uh, I'm sure piping in too, right? Um, but we're good. Everything's going out. My computer has, is getting nothing, but I'm tech challenged. So anybody on else the, on the YouTube side? Let me check. Let me check. I'm at your website. You guys chat. So what else? We see. So you're doing these anybody. things all the time with your ring light. Yeah, this is all you do. I mean, well, they had to cancel all the promotion for the show, and it was all about this. Just so you know, it is up. I'm seeing it. So, uh, all right. Let, you know, I'll text my mom later. Okay, good. Um, oh, oh, I did want to say also, uh, Marisa, you brought up a charity that you wanted to bring attention to. Um, uh, this uh, Save with Stories, right? Um, yeah. uh, our, our friend Tara from Natalie and Tara Try Stuff, she's doing the chats and stuff like that. So she's going to put a link there. Um, I think our Venmo, we may have our Venmo up. You can donate straight to us and we can do the donation or you can uh, click on the link and can find it. It's a great, tell us about that oh. charity or what do you know it's about so that charity? Cute. It's like Jennifer Garner and Amy Adams, I think started it. And it's basically celebrities reading like bedtime stories to kids, but it's to help kids who aren't in school who that therefore are missing meal things. So it's, but it's very, very cute and fun to watch. My kids have been watching them. I've been watching them, but it's also uh, doing, doing a lot of very cool that's very that. cool yeah. okay so that's there in the chat guys and then okay so i guess we can watch the movie uh, is there anything else you guys want to chat about beforehand anything you want to say about the experience or i mean we have a lot of the cast and crew that are, are tuning in so yes. thank you everybody who's on the correct, film who've right? never seen it no a couple people have seen some early cuts and stuff like that um the the score is uh your husband stephen wallach yes, who stephen was wallach on our the score which is awesome as you guys will see there's really no dialogue in the movie so it uh, <laughs> really kind of hung on some good music but thankfully i knew i had that in the bag so he um flew out to la and did the music with you guys and um we all worked on it together but he's super talented so he thank he god is. we had him his his uh his song that we use intermittently throughout the movie is like his, my favorite song of his so i heard it and i was like hmm it kind of encouraged me to make the movie actually so mm. Oh, I was going to make a joke that 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 spoils any of the movie. I'll we'll, I'll make that joke later. <laughs> Tunes and stuff like that. We'll make sure that that link gets out there too, because you guys should all get his album, which is amazing. And he was very nice to uh, do our mixtape show last week, which was really fun. And uh, we had a lot of people talk about that. And I was like, you wait till you see the movie. Wait till you see the movie. So, um, so why don't we sit back and watch the movie? This is the world premiere. Uh, you know, we were going to do our our you know so, some sort of screening and festival stuff, but. Um, we just couldn't wait, so we want to just share that with you. So, two um, people who are kind of feeling lonely and isolated and a little bit invisible who find each other, and so I hope that watching it gives you a little feeling of hope and human connection at a time when we're all feeling a little like islands in our quarantine homes. And mm. that's that. We'll see you after. I hope you have questions after, and otherwise, we'll chat. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the world premiere of Marisa Coughlin's directorial debut starring Kevin Heffernan and Marisa Coughlin, Fulfillment.
Carol. And we're back. There it was. That was your short oh. film. Hey. We watched Congratulations. it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We watched it. And, and everyone, you know, uh, for those of you watching at home, if you have any questions for, for Kevin or Marisa or the production, uh, please type them all in. I think um, it seemed like most people were just watching, which is actually as a filmmaker for you, Marisa, that's a good thing. Like we, I like that they weren't like, oh my God, what's uh, you know, what's this person you know doing and stuff like that. But uh, but we did it. There's your there's your movie. All right, cool. <laughs> I will say, Tara, if you're if you're watching, just text me some questions or whatever because I'm not over there watching the um, watching the, the live feed. But uh, um. I don't know. It's I, I'm really proud of it, Marisa. I'm really happy that it came together. I couldn't be happier with, with you know how this all has fallen in line. So thank you. Thank how you. do you feel? I feel good. I feel super grateful to you guys for helping me make it, and super grateful to Kevin for doing it. It was like one of those things where I told Kevin when we showed up on set, I'm like, it's your fault we're all here right now. Because if you had said no, I would have been like, oh, forget that. <laughs> Because it was what I pictured in my head was Kevin. And I was like, I mean, he's like making a TV show and he's not going to. But he took a weekend away from his wife and his kids and his day job making his TV show and came and did it. And um, I find him to be, especially because we've seen him as Farva and on Tacoma. It's, it's like, you know, this big brazen body sort of guy. And like to see him be this sort of soft spoken, quiet, vulnerable person i find him to be i know you in person to be such a nice person that i knew it was in there <laughs> you, this you found it Lisa, you found it <laughs> no but i really really am so grateful that he did it because i think he's so endearing and you just want to root for him for things to work out so no yeah. thank you thank you no i think you know what it's a testament to you because you know these things are hard like making a movie whether it's 15 minutes or two hours is a hard thing to do and it's you have to bring a lot of people together and get a lot of momentum and uh just being there that weekend it was clear to me that all these people were there because of you because they loved you and the, and, and how college i mean pam who plays the manager and mark kell i mean like the supervisor and mark kelly these are all people that we go back a long way oh yeah when you when you said there was a dance sequence i was like oh wait we got to call mark we got to get exactly. mark out to help us with the dance stuff so thank you to mark kelly for putting that together also kevin you also ruined one of my best arguments about why this movie was going to be difficult because she was like there's no talking it'll be easy and you read it and i'm like yeah but we need to find a warehouse and i believe it was you that helped us find that warehouse it was like he was like oh we shot here i'm like oh my god that was that was my best way to yell at marisa was finding that location was going to be so difficult but she uh, uh, 
Well, I mean, it was just it just so happened we were in in the process of finding locations for a TV show at the time, and location uh, manager that we had is wonderful. And he he places and and then recommended a few things, and apparently like a fulfillment center was a very hot thing to try to find. There is a there are stories that people want to tell about fulfillment centers right now, and he said it was a hot thing to find. So he said those people yeah. were very, very no. nice. Those people were yeah, so but, nice. No, but so Italian, nice. I mean, they I mean they 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 agreed to kind of be the extras in the movie and stuff like that. It was great. It was yeah, a like really half the cast in the movie is our actual employees. <laughs> the guys from were amazing. No, that was like my biggest, like, because uh, usually I'm either acting or writing and I don't have to worry about the budget or any of the other things. I just have to be like, if I think of it, I'm just going to put it in there and someone else can worry about it. And then I write a thing in an Amazon fulfillment center and you guys are like, okay, All right, now I'm, from here on out, anything I direct and be like, so it's you and me in a basement. <laughs> That's my basement. Okay, and now you're. Now you're plugging my old movie. Uh, but we do have a question. Okay, so so where did the concept come from? Marisa, do you want to talk a little bit about the concept? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, I don't know, for whatever reason, I, um, I, I always thought being a, an Amazon employee would be, be sort of surreal because you spend your entire day sort of packaging up the artifacts of other people's lives and kind of like, if, if you happen to be someone, the way we all look at social media, right, where it's like everyone else's lives and you're trying, you, you see what they present and you sort of maybe don't always feel like you have what they have. But if you worked in an Amazon fulfillment center all day long, you're just looking at this thing that's going to this house and envisioning where it's going and what that life might be. And I think I thought the, the concept of someone who maybe felt lonely or two people who felt sort of lonely and like they didn't have a very fulfilled life aka fulfillment um would be maybe touching just to kind of look at sort of the things they hold up and with the things they think they're missing out on and he started having the fantasies and sort of envisioning what his life would be like if he were that guy and um and then ultimately obviously what he really yearned for the most was not being you know james bond or being whatever but just a human connection and some kind of um actual feeling of Although James uh, that. Well, you also did though you toured you so you you actually were in a center right that's I, did. I, I went there's an Amazon fulfillment center that you can you can tour some of them and I don't I did I pay I don't even know if I paid but you just walk around and check it out because I was in this movie <laughs> yeah but <laughs> but uh, yeah yeah, one of the other tour. one of the other was how many drafts of the script, and I think the the real rewrites in the script were like, okay, you can't do a robot arm, you can't do. There's a lot of like, you of you have things. seventy extras here that let's see, there's going to be twelve. Yeah, and, the Amazon yeah. fulfillment center is probably not as populated as it should have been, but hey, we, we, but we and, and yeah, don't don't look too close because you'll see a couple of people uh, <laughs> over there. But um, uh, Bill Heffernan says, thank God you kept the mustache. <laughs> ah, that's my cousin. Um, well, I'll tell you what. We talked about this, and we were getting ready to shoot Tacoma, and I have to start growing my mustache like six weeks before because I, I lack, you know, I lack hair holes in my lip. And, uh, <laughs> and so ultimately, that was like about the two-week stage, and when you said, let's do this movie, I was like, i got to warn you, I'm, I'm in the really... The really scummy kind of stage of the mustache, and you're like, well, no, I'm that could, maybe that could be good. Without a mustache, I feel, yeah. it made Harold feel just that much kind of sadder. He has a half. Sadder. I know it. That's what you you said. You're right, and you were right. <laughs> right. Um, here's how many takes to the disco scene take. LOL, love it. Um, that's uh, we did that last. You that was like last we, we did, did right? Yeah. I feel like we saved every fantasy sequence for last, which means racing the clock two takes of each one of them and we were schwitzing like crazy and think I smoked it there was a lot of smoke too yeah there was a lot that of... was like i don't know was it even one long take i feel like it was just like a lot Maybe. of craziness it was super i want to see now. the um the outtakes for uh mark i mean mark Kelly, like <laughs> I know. that guy was the dancer you know what i mean no, he was put the moves on there yeah <laughs> he's, he's he's incredible he's uh he's we have we have old yeah we have old, a lot of old sketches of mark kelly uh doing dance mall and and uh and he's had the big handlebar mustache before so it's mark's mark's uh he can cut a rug with the best yeah, of them speaking of 
of our budget, we were originally going to do, of course, all the dream sequences in locations that made sense, like a bar and like the bike riding outside. And like, I don't know, everything was going to have its own cool set. And then we didn't have that money. So it all took place <laughs> yeah. in the warehouse. And we just like set, would set deck a corner of the warehouse. But it kind of worked because it was like he was sort of trapped in the warehouse and it ended mm -hmm. up working i think to our favor i like it better this way but it was also a bunch of cherry constraint <laughs> yeah. that's, that's our version like, of no. you don't get six <laughs> locations in two i don't know i was i was try, I, gave, I tried to give you as much as i possibly could but there was definitely well, we like an awesome five bedroom house that turned into a one bedroom house yes that was, that was that was hilarious and we and we peeled some wallpaper off of that but we paid for that so it's all fine you know we don't have to talk about that um there's another question here, which is, where in the world did you find the tiny TV? And I'd like to answer that. That is my grandfather's TV. That was pulled from my grandparents' house, and I am a hoarder. Uh, and so sometimes those things come in handy. So that's where the little TV came from. That was actually, I think, in my mom or in my grandmother's kitchen for years in, like, the 70s. Um, how many drafts? Uh, let's see. Was the color grading part of the writing, or was that decided in post? Uh, talk about that, Marisa, because I think originally... Originally, you... it was supposed to be totally black and white, and then the fantasies were in color and the end was in color. But I think we went back and forth and felt like, like maybe it was better to just do sort of shades of gray because their lives felt kind of muted and sad. Bryce, who produced it... Bryce, they can't see you, Bryce, can they? Only I can? Or can they see no. He's so shaking Bryce, his head for a week He did a lot of posts for us would send me like different variations of sad and gray. <laughs> but we thought maybe um, that was better than black and white. It was part, definitely part of the script from the beginning. That in his, in his fantasies, things came to life and everything was vibrant and happy and beautiful. And then at the end, when they hold hands and connect and she cries, they sort of, it's all in color again. And did you always have the concept of, of uh, I mean, Stephen and the music and the score, I mean, did... Obviously, you've been very aware of his career and his music and all that kind of stuff. But did that inspire the idea of doing a movie like this with Stephen's work? Or did you have this idea and then go, oh, you know, it would be great for it is Stephen's work? Because you, Traveler, the one song Traveler really inspired you for this, right? In the movie a lot, yeah. Um, partly he inspired to go record all of his music and release an album. And he was just like, you know, why, why not kind of? And so it sort of nudged me to be like, okay, I'm going to put on my big girl pants and go do this thing that kind of <laughs> terrifies me, but I'm going to do it anyway. And so I give him a lot of credit for um, just sort of doing that in front of me. And I saw how great it was for him and how much it meant to him to have his friends. Just, just the whole thing was amazing for him. And for our friends to sort of, it was all he really played piano and all of a sudden they're like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. So and I then didn't partly, um, I, yeah, I mean, the movie, I don't, whatever, when I wrote it, it had no dialogue. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it really needed some good music and the traveler, he plays piano at home a lot and I was like it has to be traveler so yeah it was it, it's funny of the two when I shared the script with Gary Bryman one of the producers Gary yeah. uh we talked about that too and then one of the early things at, at film school was you had to make movies without dialogue so it really I was like oh look Marisa's she's embracing this without even knowing that that's like this whole film school thing how do you tell this story and how do you how to connect with characters without and, and it was yeah. like you it was like you jumped into doing to doing that kind of that first step that that uh, a lot of film school, uh, you know, basically that's their curriculum. So I don't yeah. know if that instinctually uh, caught up I, with you. I think part of it because it at culminates in her scream and that's when sound comes. Part of it was about like her sort of finding her voice, you know, not to be too like lofty about the whole thing. But mm -hmm. I think she feels she's grieving and she sort of just feels invisible. I think they both feel pretty invisible. So I think a lot of it was just about her being like, oh my God, I'm ready to like take up space again and kind of. That reminds me, uh, how's how's your neighbor doing? <laughs> she's watching tonight. It was Is she? an awkward conversation, God bless her. Do you want to be in my movie? You're kind of not gonna make it out alive, but you'll be my mom. And we took cute pictures in my yard. Listen, I've I've killed my dad in many projects. It's really awful. I I even snipered him once. And I'm like, sorry, dad. It was awful. And he was like, what do I do? I was like, okay, for having a yeah. creative child. Yes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, and Kevin, you and you are doing uh, right now. You are uh, Tacoma FD is uh, three episodes are out in season two, right? So everybody can catch that yeah. on Troop TV and and Hulu as well, right? You guys yeah, all it's on Hulu Live, Troop TV. Please catch up on it. It's so much fun. Um, I've I've been watching it, and it's it's so fun to watch. You know the Super Troopers flavor with like a. I always think of like the rivalry between the cops and the and and the fire department. It just reminds me of like the old Cheers with Gary's Old Town Tavern, where they had the rival bar, and I, it's just I love all that stuff. So it's it's been it's been fun, you know, catching up. Um, and so you and you guys are doing post right now, right? You guys are. Yes. Yeah, so we uh we finished shooting the season in December before all this kind of happened, and then um, we started finishing the editing and stuff, and we got a little bit waylaid, but. Um, yeah, so we're about three episodes into the season and, uh, we've done 13. So, uh, hopefully we get them all done on time. Uh, but we're just going to start, you know, putting every, one out every Thursday night on true TV. So, and then, and how often are you guys doing the Tacoma? Cause that's, that's, is that just new for second season? The Tacoma, uh, FD? Yeah, it's a new thing. I mean, we, you know, we're on the Turner networks and they had like basketball and base canceled. And so they're kind of lamenting the fact they had no programming and, we are like, well, you know, if you want to give us another half an hour, we'll do a little talk show. And we were kind of joking about it. And then they called us back 15 minutes later and like, let's. Uh, that's the way you sell a show these days in, in the I pandemic guess. era. You just have a show. You put it on from your house and, you know, they air it. So. It's nuts, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah. crazy, so but it's fun. It's a blast. The, it's a blast. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. I'd rather watch you for half an hour than a baseball game. So. I, hey, okay. I mean, I, you know, we can debate that. Sure. Maybe a fifty-one. Sure. I don't know if America agrees. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Guys, baseball's coming up. Oh no, it's not coming back. Let's just go. Yeah, talk, 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 talk Amazon. That's fine. It's an interesting World Series this year. Uh, <laughs> God, I miss baseball. Um, okay, wait. There's another question. Will this exist online somewhere for streaming after this? Really want to share this. Uh, well, look, we're we're trying to figure out the film festival rules of stuff like this. We've had to do our offline movie night, which we we normally do this offline movie night where we get people together to watch short films with an audience, and we're not doing it that way now. So we're going to do our offline movie night online, ironically, and and uh, there's going to be a premiere for another one that that's going to be on Thursday. But um, but yeah, we we have to figure out to make sure that I think this is we're going to keep this up maybe for just the the rest of this run, but we will pull this live feed down because or or cut out the movie so that it doesn't mess with our eventual festival run. But that's uh, but yeah, we're gonna it'll be up there for a week or two, right, Marisa? Is that what we're doing? I think I don't I know. Think? <laughs> yeah. This is as far as I've gotten. Okay, let's talk about yeah. the rest tomorrow. No, I don't know, but we'll keep it. Up I can a talk bit. to the people at True TV. Maybe the people at True TV <laughs> they got an extra. You know, there you go. There you go. They, they can, got some time. They got some, got some network, some bandwidth. It's it twelve looks, minutes. I, we'll run them like five times in a row and fill an hour. I think people would be really great. riveted. Great. Not to uh, not to just you know plug your network though, but uh, but uh, I was having some very early on conversations with Andrea Savage, who really kicked so much butt with "I'm Sorry," and I I was actually yeah. on one of the episodes, and I shared that with you, Marisa, and I was like, you gotta. When yeah. we were talking about doing work, I was like, this is the story that Andrea did, and she I, she I think she had some other opportunities on some larger networks and some stuff, but the red tape just sounded a little crazy and true TV was given her, you know, she was able to make the show that she wanted to make, which really fun. We had a bunch of friends that worked on that and that's, that's been great. I'm sure that that's, you know, that net, that pool of your show. And I'm sorry, has been really great for true TV. It's been great. And it's also, that's the, that's the reason we went there. It's like, you know, you go around and you pitch shows and Marisa's done it too. And she sold shows, you know, in a couple of different places and you go there and you get thrown in a pile with 80 different scripts. And then maybe you might be able to shoot a pilot and whatever, yeah. but, you know, true was a situation where we went in there and it was clear they're like, we're going to put this on the air. And we're like, yeah. oh, you know, when that happens, then you just you do it. You know, yeah. that's what we all want to do. We all want to make our stuff. You know? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. The big network's rough. You definitely are in there with like eight gajillion other other pilots. Kevin, I have a question yeah. for you because I get asked every day. What's the deal with Super Troopers 3? Is it truly uh, being written right now? Um, yeah, it is being written. Um, we uh, we actually signed the deal for it. Um, it's funny because now Disney owns Fox, so Disney oh. to make oh. the next Super Troopers. Okay. And um, but yeah, so now we, we've signed the deal and we started writing. 
uh, we're going to have a little writing session tomorrow. And there's a nice Ursula arc in it. There's hey! a nice Ursula arc. Uh, By the way, that, that, you know. that's, that's another... Good. There's another question here, which was, uh, is is Marisa going to make her way onto Tacoma FD? So that's uh, oh. just a little there, there. You know, not to... That's not probably to my mom. We should do that. But, but yeah. <laughs> um, that's good. That's good timing. Because Super Troopers 2, I'm not in very heavily, but I just had a baby, and I was not <laughs> camera ready or emotionally ready. Oh, uh, you look great. <laughs> great. I literally had a baby Amen. like a week before. I'm like, oh, God. So, she had uh, she had all four of her kids at once. It was very upsetting. <laughs> Postpartum was not pretty. So, so then, Super Troopers Three, you're gonna get ripped. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm gonna be like Gun Show City. It's gonna be. I awesome. mean, it's a whole new. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, there's one last question from Ashley Jones. Uh, would you do another one, fulfillment part two? What happens after they leave the center? Oh, that's a good I mean, question. Cliffhanger. <laughs> Maybe we'll Would it be a happy little... ending or not, not a happy ending? I don't know. I think it's going to be happy, but okay. I don't know. It's they go right to the, now. They're they go right to the together. bike store. Get ugly. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thanks, you guys. Thanks to our friends and family and fans and anyone that watched. Oh, guys, thank you so much for, for doing this. This is really fun. I think this is, I mean, we obviously have to figure out new ways to share our content. And and this has been very interesting. We've been troubleshooting a lot of this stuff. And, and uh, it's been fun to, to, to share this stuff. And, and to have you guys all hanging out is just really fun. Because make fun it, you know. Put it out there. Because it's just like, you don't want to sit on something for months and months and months and months. You want, you know. Yeah, you yeah. And the see it in whatever way you see it. Yeah, yeah, no, so thank you. So um, again, guys, check out the charity that uh, that Marisa wants to point you guys all out, Save With Stories. Um, uh, donate to that if you can. Um, I think uh, Watch Tacoma FD, we have more more of that is coming out. Um, we have more of our Drama 3-4 stuff. There's a, a whole lot of our catalog, and we're going to be doing a few more of these events. Uh, we're going to do another one on Thursday. We're doing the offline movie night, so we're going to have a whole collection of short films with a lot of stuff that we've worked on or been associated with or people we just love and we want to showcase. And uh, we just have a lot of fun stuff coming up and thanking Kevin and Marisa and uh, for, for working on this and for sharing this. And we just can't thank everybody enough. And thank you to Natalie and Tara uh, Try Stuff and Tara Jane, who's doing uh, some curating there and Bryce for doing all the technical wizardry behind yeah. the curtain. Um, yes. Anything else you guys? What else am I saying? What else? What am I forgetting? No, thank you to the I'll casting say thank crew. You. Hopefully y'all watched it tonight. I hope they got to see it because I think they hadn't seen it yet. So thank you for the to the Good. casting crew. Yes. Hopefully the guys at Medallion, you sent it to them and they got to I did. It. I sent them I sent them a thing, like right at the thing. I was like, check it out if you can. So I hopefully the fulfillment that. peeps all saw. I mean the people in the in the Amazon, whatever it was, Medallion Fulfillment Center saw it because they were amazing and they so were awesome. right. and we right. couldn't have made that movie without them. So um that's it. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. Thanks everybody. Have a good night. All right.